First, what is a process strategy? Well, it's an organization's approach to transforming resources into goods and services. So resources can be labor, material, uh, anything that we are using to transform that input into an output, whether it's a good or a service. And so you've got to have a process for doing so. The four main process strategies are the process focus, repetitive focus, product focus, and mass customization. And again, our goal in operations is to match the organizational strategy and our competitive advantages uh, so that we are designing and building products that match our, our customers' needs. Within these basic strategies, there's many ways that, um, that a process strategy can be implemented. So it's not a one size fits all. You can have some of the strategies that might be more tailored towards a process focus and other strategies that are a little bit more repetitive. So you can pick and choose some strategies that work from each. Um, I have historically worked for a uh, facility that is a process focus, more of a job shop, where it's high mix, uh, high um, low volume type of uh, capital equipment that we're manufacturing. Uh, but as our volumes have increased, we've tried to pivot more and more into a repetitive type of process using assembly lines, building to sub-assemblies. And so some of these things that we'll talk about over the next couple of slides, um, you, you will need to understand the, the major categories of these four strategies, uh, but there are many ways to get them implemented and sometimes they overlap a little. So this slide's a little busy, um, but the, the key takeaway is that you need to look at the, the top portion where we have volume. So on the far left is low volume, on the far right is high volume, and right in the middle is uh, medium volume or a repetitive process. On the far left, you can see that on the bottom, there is low variety. So there's not a whole lot of changes from one product to the next. They're all relatively the same. And on the, on the top, when there's high variety or high flexibility, this would be when there's a lot of variability between the products that you make. So let's talk about uh, the process focus real quick. These are when you're building things around projects or work orders. Sometimes these are called job shops. Um, this is where you have a lot of different specialty machines. Uh, it could be a machine shop. It could be a print shop. Uh, hospitals and restaurants would fall into this category. Um, I'm going to accidentally just say high, um, low volume, high mix, because mix is the same thing as variety. Um, that's the term that I've uh, learned over the years. And so instead of saying um, low volume and high variety, I'm just going to say high mix, uh, but it can also, you know, um, they mean the same thing. So again, a process focus is when you have lower volume and higher variety products. The manufacturing firms I've worked for, uh, we had, you know, hundreds and hundreds of SKUs that our customers could buy from us. Uh, things weren't necessarily custom, but they could customize every single one uh, a little bit. And so that was a process focus. Uh, think about a restaurant. You can go in and you can get a custom made order in, in many different restaurants. So that is a process focus. Um, in the middle is the repetitive process focus. And that is where you're going to have medium volume and medium flexibility or variety or mix. A good example of this could be uh, automobiles or as the, the book example of Harley Davidson's, this is where you could have assembly lines, but there's still some customer variety. So you can make changes as you go because um, not all customers want the same exact thing, but it's not customized. So an example of that would be uh, if you're going to buy a Toyota Tacoma, they're going to come with different size engines. They're kind of going to come with cloth and leather. Some are going to have more electronic bells and whistles and more uh, upgrades that you can buy. So there's probably about 10 to 15 different Toyota Tacomas you could buy. So it's still relatively high volume, but it's on and it's done on an assembly line, but customers have different preferences. So they will build up to a certain point and then that variety will kick in. So you can do things by subassembly. You can then make blue Tacomas, then white Tacomas, then brown Tacomas or whatever colors are out there. You can have a V6 engine installed or a um, four cylinder a stick shift or automatic. So at some point that customization is going to begin and it's based off of customer forecasts and purchase history. On the bottom left, this is where things are 
uh, high volume and low variety. So examples of product focus, where you're just making the same products over and over and over again, would be commercial baked goods, a beer, steel, things where there's not a whole lot of variety. We order some of the same household products every, you know, every month, right? And they're not going to change. I'm, I'm buying the same um, toilet paper and paper towels and diapers and bread, you know, Wonder Bread, whatever it may be. That is a product focus. They're making the same exact stuff on that assembly line every single day. So it's high on the process side and low on the variety side. So a couple things to point out just right off the bat when we're talking about uh, these different product and process uh, differences is that with a process focus, you're going to have capital equipment in all of these different kinds of processes. But with a process focus, because everything is customizable, or close to customizable, uh, you might have low equipment utilization. Think about a hospital. When you go into a hospital and you've got, um, you know, potentially a broken bone, you're going to go get an x-ray on that bone. That x-ray machine might sit there for a few more hours before the next patient comes in who also needs an x-ray. So that's low equipment utilization. On the flip side of that, for the product focus type of um, uh, process strategies. At Frito-Lay or a place that does commercial baked goods, they probably are running some of that equipment 24-7. They are constantly running that equipment and so it's got a high equipment utilization. So that's just one of the, the uh, big differences between uh, something that's a product focus versus a process focus. Uh, and these three strategies that I've discussed are the most common uh, because they are frankly the easiest to achieve. Mass customization is when you have high volume and high variety. That's what many organizations who are a product focus or a process focus aspire to be, but having a mass customization process focus takes a lot of capital to get the equipment where you can do the high volumes, but it also takes a product where customers care that they wanna have that variety. So examples could be Dell computers, um, Mini cars, you know, you could you used to be able to design whatever kind of car you wanted when you when you got a mini. Uh, Nike is an example of that. They not only do they mass produce shoes, but they also make custom shoes as well that have a relatively short lead time. So that's mass customization. It's difficult to achieve, uh, but the rewards are great because if you can achieve mass customization with high volume and high variety, uh, that is everything that a that a customer would want. So let's uh, briefly talk about process focus again. This is a production facility organized around processes to facilitate low volume, high variety of production. Facilities are organized around specific activities or processes. The general purpose equipment, uh, there's general purpose equipment and there's very skilled labor. There's a high degree of product flexibility and it typically has high equipment costs and low equipment utilization. And lastly, product flows may vary considerably, making planning and scheduling a challenge. So a great example of a process focus is a hospital. You have lots of different inputs, and in a hospital's example, the input is a patient. Okay, so if a patient comes into a hospital, uh, a pregnant lady versus someone who has a cough, versus someone who uh, has a broken bone, those three inputs, those three patients are very different inputs and they're going to go to very different departments within that organization or that hospital. So a process focused type of strategy means that there's going to be specialized people and equipment and departments who can support each one of those folks, each one of those inputs. and. Um, and then there's going to be very different outputs. Uh, the, the pregnant lady who is going to leave with the baby. Uh, the sick person who was coughing uh, is maybe going to leave with uh, some medicine. And then the person that came in with a broken bone is going to leave with a cast. So many different kinds of inputs and many different kinds of outputs. That is a process focus. Okay, next is a repetitive focus. Another name for this, um, you would think of places that are assembly lines. Um, and with a repetitive focus, the book talks about modules. Uh, this is parts or components uh, that a product previously prepared, often in a continuous process. 
Um, a word I use for this would be considered sub-assemblies versus the finished good assembly, which is the final product. A sub-assembly is a module that goes into that. So you can have fan assemblies, engine assemblies, the chassis assembly, if this were um, a Harley-Davidson facility. Um, so the example the book uses is Harley-Davidson. Many of those products that are going down that assembly line, you're going to have a standard type of motorcycle. And then, like the example I used with Toyota Tacomas, they are going to get customized throughout that process. Some are going to have bigger engines, some are going to have smaller engines, some are going to be one color, some are going to be another color. So there is some product flexibility or variety, but uh, things are repetitively built on an assembly line. They're built in modules, so it's still medium volume and medium mix or medium flexibility. And, um, and so that is a repetitive focus. So a repetitive focus is a product-oriented production process that uses modules or sub-assemblies. Uh, the features of a repetitive focus are facilities are often organized in assembly lines. Um, modules can be combined for many different outputs um, and less flexibility than a process-focused facility, but more flexibility and more efficient um, than a product focus. So if you look at the diagram for the repetitive focus, you can see that there's lots of different inputs um, and then there's a variety of outputs. So that is a repetitive focus. For product focus, a product focus is a facility organized around products, a product oriented, high volume, low variety type process. So um, the features of a product focus facility would be they're organized by product, high volume and low variety, long continuous production runs, uh, make things very efficient uh, on, those, on those lines. And there's typically high fixed costs, but low variable costs. And so the reason for that would be because if you think about a manufacturing facility doing commercial baked goods or Frito-Lays, um, those pieces of equipment are going to be highly automated. There might be robots. They're going to be um, not a whole lot of individuals working to build that product. It's going to be done by capital equipment, machinery, and other things that are automated. So your upfront cost is high, but you don't have a whole lot of people that are responsible for making that product. So that equipment can be utilized continuously. Um, you know, high volume assembly lines don't need to take coffee breaks. They don't they don't need to sleep at night, so they can be run uh, non-stop. So there's a high degree of equipment utilization. And then there's generally less skilled labor uh, because the machinery does the work for you. So an example of product focus is Frito-Lays. There's very few inputs. You've got your corn, your potatoes, your water, your seasoning. Let's call it 10 ingredients total. It goes into that product focus type of um, facility. And then there's very little difference in the output of that product. You might have Frito-Lays in a individualized size bag or a little bit bigger bag or a family size bag, but that's still the same product. It's just in different packaging. So there's not a whole lot of variation between um, that type of product. So that is a product focus. Okay, lastly, let's talk about mass customization. Again, this is rapid, low-cost production that caters to constantly changing unique customer desires. This is, without question, the hardest for an organization to accomplish because you've got to have high volume plus products that can be built to order. It combines the flexibility of a process focus with the efficiency of a product focus. So um, some of the features of mass customization are uh, fast product design, rapid process design, tightly controlled inventory management processes, extremely tight uh, schedules, so a lot of just-in-time, a lot of lean inventory, um, lean layouts, that kind of thing, and then very responsive to supply chain partners because you're going to be implementing just-in-time philosophies to make sure that you don't have a whole lot of inventory because things are constantly changing. So an example for mass customization would be Dell Computers. You can you put in many different inputs. You've got your computer chips, your hard drives, your software, your cases. Uh, it can be a different, it can be a large computer, a small computer, various different colors, various different speeds. And then there's a whole lot of different outputs that come out of that. And typically customers can get a custom made PC uh, in just a couple of weeks. So 
uh, Dell computers. Um, I, I keep using the example Nike as well. Uh, my, a friend of mine uh, for his bachelor party, uh, he ordered us all custom uh, Nike training shoes uh, with our um, school colors. So um, because I went to Arizona State for my undergraduate degree, um, the shoes that I got were maroon and gold and they had my name on the back and he said the lead time was two weeks. Uh, so that is that is mass customization. They are doing high volume and um, high variety products uh, on in, in that facility with that process. So that is mass customization. Okay, uh, I'm not going to go through all of the different differences or comparisons of a process uh, because I've already talked about that on, on some of the last uh, slides. But in your textbook, you can look at this table and um, and really just understand the difference between these four different processes, thinking through, you know, how does it how do products vary between these four different process strategies? What about uh, skilled operators? How about inventory? How does inventory differ for a facility that is a process focus versus mass customization versus repetitive or product? All those different four kinds of strategies. You know, if you take uh, inventory as an example, a process focus where there's a lot of low volume and high mix type of products, you're going to have higher inventory to support your customer's customization. So that's the kind of facility I've always worked in. I managed 20,000 or so different SKUs. And so, of course, we had a little bit more inventory than if I were to have worked at Frito-Lay, which is a product focus, and I only had to manage 10 different inputs or 10 different SKUs to make that output. So you just you know think through the different uh, comparisons of a process that with a product focus, you're going to have less inventory. With a process focus, you're going to have higher inventory. And then there's, um, um, you know, there's going to be a difference between finished goods, scheduling, fixed costs. Um, you know, if you think about finished goods and, and you use, uh, you know, restaurants, for an example, right? Um, uh, if you're a restaurant, you don't have finished goods. Everything is a customized order. So people come into the facility in a restaurant, everything's custom, everything's made to order. And so that is a process focus. A repetitive focus could be fast food because there's not a whole lot of variation of the products that you can get at McDonald's or some other uh, facilities that do fast food. Maybe they are building things ahead. Maybe they're reef, um, you know, uh, cooking the, the burgers. Maybe they are making French fries. Uh, so all of those things can be maybe built up a little bit because there's not a whole lot of flexibility and the volume is still medium volume. So a fast food restaurant would be repetitive focus. And then product focus when it comes to, to food again, uh, as an example, would be, you know, commercial baked goods um, where uh, or Frito-Lay somewhere where they're just constantly making the same uh, edible products over and over again. And so that would be more of a product focus. So just try and understand some of the different comparisons of these four different process strategies. Uh, it is good to uh, conceptually understand them because you're going to want to make processes that align with your company strategy and uh, really focus on your competitive advantages so that you have a process that matches that strategy and can you know beat out some of your other uh, competitors uh, when it comes to trying to create a highly efficient uh, operation. Okay, so those are the four key process strategies in our next couple of videos. Uh, we'll talk about process uh, analysis and some of the various different kinds of uh, production technologies that are available to support our process strategies.